along to the next instalment of our January content campaign, Digitization of the Landlord Lifecycle, which we are hosting in association with our friends and partners at Landlord. And all this month, we're going to be highlighting the benefits of a digital mindset for landlords and how using digital services and products can help them uh, really become more efficient in their property business. And also, we're going to be showcasing how the trend is very much towards digital uh, within the property sector. Um, all this week, we are still in the acquisition phase, and that is where landlords are just getting themselves set up to start their property business. And um, in our view, this is where tax becomes extremely relevant and uh, for this episode I am delighted to be joined by Property Tribe's tax partner uh, Michael Wright uh, of Rental Income Tax Advisors or RITA for short. So Michael um, I, it's so lovely to see you again. Happy New Year to you. Yes very happy New Year and uh, thank you for inviting me today. Well, I know how busy you are, Michael, because as we speak, obviously, we are counting down to the deadline um, for, for filing your self-assessment tax return, which all landlords need to be doing. Um, the good news is, though, that, that there's a bit of a, an extension, isn't there, by HMRC, a little bit of an amnesty because of COVID-19. Yes, so what has happened is, similarly to last year, uh, they're now allowing you an extra 28 days to file your self-assessment tax return. So uh, whereas normally, if you didn't file your tax return on the 31st of January, if you filed it even one day late, you would have got your £100 penalty, which then gets progressively worse as you become later and later in, in filing your tax return. And so what they're allowing you is the extra 28 days to file it and not uh, impose that £100 penalty onto you. And the only, I suppose, slight a slight difference really is the interest that they're going to continue to impose that interest um so you know if you paid your your tax late um they you know, they, they will still add that interest onto it but in the grand scheme of things that will probably likely be pennies um but uh, you know, the important thing is is really as always try not to leave things to the last minute and really just try and get the tax return in as, as early as possible and uh, there are many reasons for that. Yes, I was going to ask you, Michael, um, it is best practice to get your tax return in um, as early as possible. What are the benefits to doing that while we're on this topic? Um, well, I suppose there's benefits to us and there's benefits to, uh, to the landlords. I suppose the main benefit to us is that uh, we are always swimming in tax returns as the deadline approaches. Um, you know, with the best will in the world, there's always many clients who always leave everything to the last minute. Um, I suppose as well, it's worth pointing out that uh, these are the clients that already have an accountant or tax advisor. Um, and if you don't already have one and you need assistance, you may well find it very hard to find a, um, an accountant in, uh, in January. Um, but uh, on a serious note, um, one of the you know, many reasons to file your tax return early is um, so that you've got plenty of warning uh, of any taxes that are owed. So you've got sufficient time to save and to pay. And if you're filing early, you've got more time to go through all your expenses with a fine tooth comb, um, ensuring that you're not missing anything. Um, it may also allow you the time to um, seek any missing invoices from suppliers to justify your claims. Um, you know, of course, it's a different conversation as to whether you want to claim all these expenses. If you're going for a mortgage application, you may need to show a certain level of profit, but that's a case of looking at the wider position. Um, on the subject of mortgages, uh, if you are applying for a mortgage, they may insist on your latest tax return being completed. Um, so once again, that's a, a good idea to um, make sure that you're filing on time. Um, I suppose if you're making payments on account, uh, which if you owe a certain amount of tax, you might be in the payments on account system, it's a good idea to file early because 
you may be needlessly paying your second payment on account that's not due, and you may be in a position where you have overpaid HMRC. Um, and as is typical at the moment, uh, HMRC are a lot quicker chasing you for money than they are refunding it. Um, so I, I, suppose, uh, I suppose one other reason why filing early is, is a, a good idea is at the moment, I mean, things will change in the future, no doubt, but at the moment, um, there is a, a less known deadline of the 30th of December, where if the conditions are correct and you owe less than £3,000, you may be able to spread that payment over a period from April the following year to, to March the year after. So that can help for um, cash flow purposes. Um, I suppose just a, a few final point is that if you are leaving matters to the last minute then you, know, you do run the risk of making mistakes uh, getting into issues with the revenue and customs and of course going back to what we said at the start um, you can open yourself up to late late filing penalties late payment penalties um, and, uh, and and so on so I think that's that probably covers most of the reasons why it's best practice to get into the routine of filing as early as you can and on time. Well, that's why we love having you as our tax partner, Michael. That's such valuable information you've just shared. And I actually wasn't aware of that 31st of December deadline myself. So every day is a school day at Property Tribes. Um, let's move on to the topic of uh, you know, what our theme month is all about, the digitization of the landlord life cycle. As I mentioned, we've put tax in the acquisition stage. And I'm sure you'll agree that it's so vital to get the correct tax structure before you start acquiring properties or understand how your tax structure is going to develop over time, because you want to build your property portfolio on solid foundations and it always costs a lot more to change things further down the line doesn't it so you I'm sure you agree with us uh, Michael that tax and a conversation uh, with a tax advisor is in your pre-acquisition stage yes I think there's there's probably two elements to that though I think um, what you say is correct that it's very important when you're starting out to get the structures correct from the outset. Um, and that's an important conversation to have with your tax advisor, be that us or whomever else. Um, and uh, also just, it's got to also be used in combination with, with other advice as well. So you should make sure that uh, you've got a good team that uh, can advise you on mortgages. So making sure you've got a good mortgage broker, um, making sure that you've got a good solicitor um, and that it all comes together and that you've got a very good, you know, reliable team around you to advise you and to have your best interests at heart um, and I said there was two elements to this because going back to what I said at the start whilst it's it is very important to get the structure right at the start it's also important to have regular ongoing reviews be that quarterly six monthly yearly to to just see and say that this is what we decided from the start was a good route forward. This tax law has changed, that tax law has changed, this has changed. Is this still the best way of doing things? Um, can we be doing something better? So it's really a case of regularly reviewing in combination with getting that structure right from the outset. Yes, and of course, one of the most frequently asked questions on, on property tribes is, should I invest as a sole trader or should I invest through another tax structure of, of which there's quite a few, probably the most well-known one is investing via a limited company. Um, thankfully, Rita produced a really fantastic article that goes some way to answering this question. But Michael, it's very, very bespoke advice as to whether uh, you would go down the uh, sole trader route or uh, another tax structure route isn't it it's not something that you can really get advice for 
on a forum and, and when these questions crop up um, I always direct our members to your article but I say that this is one of the rare occasions where forum advice is not appropriate and it is worth every penny to uh, pay for professional tax advice from a company such as Rita. Yes I think when when we first started dealing with property tax I, I mean it was always a niche sector of the tax system it was always a complicated system but in comparison to now things used to be simpler um, so many things have changed the government have um, you know, decided to uh, target landlords again and again and again and I think really the, the biggest lesson with all the recent, recent tax changes and now more than ever um, is that you really, you know, there isn't one simple answer. You need bespoke tax advice to suit your own circumstances. Um, you could be drinking in the pub with a friend and both of you own two properties with similar rental income. Um, but the advice could be so different for each of them. One could be married, the other could be not. One could have a separate company, the other not. One could have a job, the other not. One could have an investment portfolio, the other not. Um, it goes on and really the same ethos applies that we've always really said from the start, um, is where do you want to be in the future? What do you want to achieve? And then really map the way there and it goes back to what I said before about having a good team around you, because it's not just about tax. You've got to map the way there, um, I suppose, concurrently from an investment of wealth and a tax perspective. Um, and, you know, as I always used to say, making the right decisions for the right reasons. And really that ethos has un is, is unchanged. Yes, definitely. And we are seeing reports in the media that a lot, a lot more landlords are investing through limited company structures. There's a lot more mortgage, uh, mortgages and financial products around for landlords who choose to go down that route. Do you have any data from, from RETA customers about percentages of landlords kind of in their sole trader name or, la or are you seeing more landlords go into limited company structures? How, how, is, how is it uh, the land lying at RETA? Um, well, it is, it's very, very different, really. It's, it's, uh, it's so many clients have got so many different um, sets of circumstances. It's, it's very hard, I suppose, to, to put percentages on, um, you know, what clients have done, what things. Um, there has, of course, been quite a, a, a marked increase in um, landlords coming to us who have set up limited companies and want us to assist um, with, with looking after that. So I suppose as far as new client inquiries are, are concerned, there has been a marked interest of uh, limited company new inquiries coming, coming through our door, especially compared to you know, three or four years ago um, when Section 24 wasn't even announced. So um, it's, um, it, it's certainly a changing, changing scenario, but um, you know, as, as we say there, there is no um, there is no norm, there is no right answer, and it is just really um, a case of, of sitting down with your advisor and um, you know making the decision as to what suits your own circumstances the best. Yes, you mentioned the S word there, Section 24. Um, it's now in full effect um, in, in private rented sector. Um, we've now got the 20% tax credit come into play. Have, has it uh, been as pernicious uh, to landlords as was predicted, or have most landlords been able to, uh, you know, find a way through it? Um, okay, it, I, I don't mean to keep saying it depends, but it, it does depend. I mean, there, there has been um, a, a number of clients who have been uh, extremely badly affected and, you know, we may have sat down with some of those and they may want to, to, to take um, a different approach in the future. Um, there's been some landlords who have just said, look, you know, I'm 75 now, I just can't be bothered with this anymore, I'm going to sell up. Um, and um, <laughs> then you've got, yet again, uh, complying with other new changes that have happened with the CGT rules, that now you've got a lot shorter window to um, uh, to get that completed. Um, so, um, so yes, it, it, it just, it, it, it has affected 
quite a few people. Um, I mean, there, there are others where there's there's been more simple things that they've been able to do. Um, you know, perhaps if they've um, got a wife who is at home looking after the children, and there may be something that can be done as far as splitting the rental profits between husband and wife. Um, and you know, for others, they may have built up historic losses. So it may be more something that is going to be considered next year or the year after. So, um, it, yeah, again, it, it, it very much depends. But it's, um, it's, it's a hot topic and it is um, something that will, will continue to be a hot topic. Yes, it was one of the hottest topics of uh, 2021 with a thread called Section 24 is really hurting. Um, but I will link to uh, the article by Rita about the big tax question, should I incorporate? Because that's a very good general overview. And then, of course, please do get in touch with Michael and his team uh, if you require specialist um, tax advice. Now, Michael, the whole... Um, theme of this month's content is to digitize uh, the landlord life cycle, as I stated at the beginning. Um, and this is impacting every, almost every ax, uh, you know, aspect of our sector. Um, we've got digitization of the land registry. Um, <clears throat> we heard uh, a few, few days ago that um, there's a prediction that the entire property uh, acquisition process will be digitized by 2025. Um, but we've also got digitization coming into the tax um, sphere, and that is making tax digital, which uh, keeps being pushed back. And it's currently at 2024. Uh, there is a de deadline for uh, VAT registered uh, landlords uh, for April this year, but that is going to be affecting mainly holiday letters, short term accommodation providers and developers. So not your sole trader landlord who's not VAT registered, because obviously uh, letting income doesn't come under VAT. Um, but, you know, Michael, this making tax digital is a very, very big shake up for landlords. Could you give us a bit of insights into it and how it's going to work? Yes, well, it's it is going to be a very big change. Um, it's going to be uh, a very different way of reporting for uh, a lot of landlords, a lot of our clients. Um, they've been very used to um, it being in a routine of Christmas is out of the way, right, I better start thinking about my taxes. And um, it's, it's going to be a bit of a change in mindset, um, in organisation. And I think it really goes back to what we were discussing at the start of the video, in that it's using those same, um, I suppose, benefits of filing early, but applying that to making tax digital. So this, the situation is essentially going to be, um, once we get to April 2024, if it's not delayed yet again, um, is that from April 2024, we will be in a routine of having to do quarterly returns. So the first one would be from 6th of April 2024 to the 5th of June 2024. Um, and then you would have a deadline, which would be the 5th of the month following that. So the first return would be reporting to the period to the 5th of June. So you would have a deadline of the 5th of July to send your first um, quarterly return or, or whatever you want to call it. Um, you would do four of those a year. And then when you get to the end of the year, you would do effectively a final submission and you would put through any adjustments and, and so forth. Um, so that really emphasises the point that it's not going to be a case of just trying to rush through things once a year. It's going to be a case of being on top of things. Um, and I think this um, ties in quite nicely with... Um, you know, the digitization of records in that if you're not already keeping digital records, um, it's probably an ideal time between now and 2024 to, I suppose, dip your feet in, have a look at what's on the market and you know, start to try and change your processes, especially if you're on a, on a paper-based type system, to really try and um, you know, professionalise your record keeping and get it more organised. And you know, not only will that benefit 
you from a compliance side of things in that you won't uh, be penalised for late filing. Um, it can also professionalise things from a different point of view in that you will have a better understanding as the year goes on as to what the profitability is. Um, and, you know, that, that can have quite a, quite a few benefits for you. Yes, and um, our partner for this content collaboration, Lendlord, has a profit and loss module uh, on, on their platform. Um, and I will drop a video below this one explaining how to input all your uh, property expenses um, and income uh, and all your receipts and uh, invoices, etc. So you can start, as Michael says, getting in this digital mindset ready for 2024 as it is now. But Michael, does that mean that you have to pay your tax liability quarterly or will it still be at the end of the year? So you'll still pay it on 31st of January. So, um, so yes, so it's, it's a case of your, um, you're effectively doing four, um, it's choosing the best word, I suppose, four interim returns. Um, and then the final return is effectively finalising it. Um, so that's, as it is now but you know things could change in the future and I think really it's a case of keeping an eye on government announcements keeping an eye on the budget um, because a lot of this will potentially be subject to change um, I suppose one thing I should probably add um, as well to this is that um, and this is you know perhaps for, for some of those who are extremely concerned for, say, age reasons, and I have had a couple of these difficult conversations with, with clients who are perhaps in their 70s or 80s, um, who have not even touched a computer before, um, is that as it stands at the moment, there is um, an exception, an exemption to making tax digital if there are you know, serious reasons why you are just simply unable to make these quality filings, be it you know, complete lack of uh, technological au fait, um, you know, or you just have no internet connection. Um, so it may be worth just having a, a quick look at the government website and just seeing if um, you do fall into, into those. So they are understanding on that side of things. But um, you know, that's more the minority rather than the majority. I thought it was just worth pointing that out. You know, with, with um, making tax digital, you know, on, on the horizon, you're right to say that landlords need to get, get kind of with the program now, so to speak. But will our accountants or tax advisors be able to you know, still do our tax return for us? Because I've always, always, always used uh, um, you know, a specialist tax advisor, accountant to, to file my returns. Will, will we still be able to send them the information to file on our behalf? Yes, I, I think it depends on what the software you use and whether there's facilities in that to send that directly to the Revenue and Customs um, or whether you, you would ask your accountant to get their software to integrate with your software or whether you wanted your accountant to hook in remotely to your software. Um, so it's really, I think, finding that the best routine um, to work with your accountant as to what, what the best system will be moving forward. Um, but as far as we're concerned, we have software um, that will enable the, the filing of, um, of the quarterly returns. So um, yeah, and at the moment there are a few software packages that we integrate with um, at the moment, um, you know, things like Xero, QuickBooks and Free Agent are the, some of the ones that um, our ones integrate with. But you know, as we say, this is still very early technology and I expect that will grow and um, you know, potentially with, with landlord as well. So yes. Well, that's brilliant. Um, thank you so much for joining us uh, on this call, Michael. Um, just as we close this out, are you expecting any further tax changes for landlords in uh, 2022? Well, I hope not. <laughs> so, um, I, it's, it's very difficult to say at the moment. There's, um, there, there's been so many rumours and... Um, <laughs> I don't honestly know is the answer, um, but at the same time, I would not be surprised in the least. Um, landlords seem to be viewed by the government as a easy and soft target, um, and I don't expect that will change anytime soon. Um, 
if I was to make a guess, I would say potentially the next thing they may target would be capital gains tax. Um, but we shall see. Um, watch this space. Watch the budget. <laughs> <laughs> good, good advice. Well, as always, Michael, thank you so much um, for your support of the Property Tribes community. And Michael and the Rita team are at your disposal to help you uh, with your uh, tax affairs. Please do get in touch with them. Um, they're also the preferred tax partner of the uh, National Resident Landlords Association um, and they specialise solely in landlord and property tax. Um, so all that remains Michael is to wish you very happy and healthy uh, 2022 and uh, let's uh, keep the dialogue going about make, making tax digital. It's, it is in the, the future as we know 2024 currently but you know things can change. I think we need to keep creating awareness around this topic for landlords, bearing in mind that some landlords still don't know that you have to protect a tenant's deposit and that legislation has been in effect over a decade. So I think we do need to keep uh, banging the MTD drum going forwards and hopefully you'll be able to help us do that. Brilliant. Yeah. That's no problem at all. So uh, join us uh, for our next instalment of digitization of the landlord life cycle. I will see you tomorrow. We'll still be in the acquisition phase and we'll be helping you understand all the different uh, touch points along uh, the life cycle of a landlord where you can use digital tools and products and services to improve uh, your landlord life and efficiency. So join me for the next instalment. Mm -hmm.